word is chaos. You'll have to see it to believe it. Whoever said that must have been talking about Talladega. It's a place where chaos mixes with speed. Where a town turns into a city and a weekend becomes a lifetime of memories. It's a tradition like no other. What a wild finish. And a track like no other. And after it's all over, you still won't believe it ever happened. Get your tickets now at Talladega Super Speedway. Roll Tide and welcome to this Tuesday edition of Crimson Drive driven by NASCAR. I'm Roger Hoover. It's great to be back with you from the CTSN studios for another edition of this show as college football season keeps rolling along for the Alabama Crimson Tide. And if you think about 12 games in the regular season, already a third of the season is complete with what we've seen Alabama do here in the month of September and the Crimson Tide off to a perfect 4-0 start. We'll start going through our show today with the help of our friends RJ Young. They're the official technology solutions provider of Crimson Drive. They've given us the smart board to go through all the different headlines, starting with what's coming up on the show. It was a great win against Vanderbilt on Saturday in Tuscaloosa. We'll take a look back at that victory with our booth cam highlights, a very entertaining edition of the booth cam highlights coming up from this past weekend against Vanderbilt. And then we'll hear from the head coach of the Crimson Tide, Nick Saban, with Coach's Checklist as we take a look back at the Vanderbilt win, plus look forward to this week's opponent, Arkansas. We'll have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with Crimson Tide offensive lineman J.C. Latham as we always have one-on-one -on -one conversations on Crimson Drive with Alabama football players, and today we'll hear from J.C. Latham, also a preview of Thursday's show. We'll get to chat with linebacker Henry Tooto, so we look forward to that conversation as well, but J.C.'s coming up in this show today, and then we'll start thinking about the Arkansas Razor their radio broadcaster Chuck Barrett joins us to talk about a very disappointing end to the ball game they just had in Arlington against Texas A&M, but this is still a really good Arkansas team that's coming up this week. So we'll get thoughts from Chuck Barrett about the Razorbacks, and then we'll have Be Kind Crimson Tide Rewind. Of course, Crimson Tide Rewind is our Monday night show across the radio network and streaming live here on our social media outlets, and you'll get to hear some of the best moments from last night as Corey Reamer joined me at Bomb Howard's Victory Grill in Vestavia Hills for Crimson Tide Rewind, so just be kind. Crimson Tide Rewind. We'll have that coming up in just a little bit. Going through some other headlines for today, taking a look at the Crimson Tide football team. Great victory to start conference play with a 55-3 win over Vanderbilt inside Bryant Denny Stadium. And coming up this week, Crimson Tide, after two weeks in a row at home, back on the road against the Arkansas Razorbacks. Kickoff set for 2.30 p.m. And we will have radio coverage starting at 11.30 from Reynolds Razorback Stadium. Great news for Will Anderson Jr. He was named the SEC Defensive Player of the Week as he had two sacks, looked really strong against Vanderbilt so more honors keep rolling in for Will. And then we learned as well that the Texas A&M kickoff is now scheduled for 7 p.m. coming up on October 8th. So if you enjoyed the lights that we got to see at Bryant Denny Stadium, how about the crimson lights turned on, everybody putting their cell phone up and doing the wave around the stadium, their cell phone light. Uh, it was really incredible to see. And it's going to be a charged atmosphere for the Aggies coming up in just under two weeks from now in Tuscaloosa. Speaking of charged up, Crimson Tide soccer keep on winning. Last Thursday, had to go on the road and defeated the reigning SEC tournament champion Tennessee by a 4-2 final score and then came home and took care of business against Texas A&M. A 3-0 a win over the Aggies. That was a great match for Felicia Knox. Couple of assists as well as a goal for her, as well as a goal for Gianna Paul, who was named the SEC Freshman of the Week. Helping Alabama to six straight victories and the Crimson Tide, we know right now are number six in the nation. Later this afternoon we'll get an updated ranking for Alabama soccer we expect it to be the first top five ranking ever in program history coming up for Alabama so congratulations to Coach Hart, Coach Hart and the Crimson Tide hopefully can keep the winning ways going so final notes on Alabama athletics. Uh, basketball has started preseason work as we got to see a lot from the men's basketball team, of course, getting ready for their foreign tour when they were able to go to Spain and France over the summer. But now they're ready to go starting preseason practice on Monday. Same could be said for Christy Curry and the women's basketball team. So great to see those programs off to a really good start in practice. Volleyball has started conference play when 0-2 against Auburn last weekend inside Foster Auditorium. And then, yes, it is the fall, but 
but we're talking a little bit of baseball and softball because their fall practice continue as they get ready for some exhibition matchups coming up later on starting in October and then of course it's going to be here before we know it February the start of baseball and softball season right as basketball is going as well but we know there's been good work done in practice and the men's golf team is very very busy in Vestavia Hills hosting SEC match play at Old Overton uh, hosted by Jerry Pate as well so best of luck to Jay Sewell in the men's golf team. But as we get going on Crimson Drive, driven by NASCAR, I want to take a look back to the victory that we saw for the Crimson Tide against Vanderbilt. We always have the booth cam live and up and running before Alabama football games as well as during games so you can hear our radio broadcast and also see the reactions that we have in the booth to all the plays on the field. Here's a look at the booth cam highlights from this past Saturday against Vanderbilt. Gives the deep man standing on the goal line as Willemus will kick from the north end zone towards the south, and we are underway from the 21. Second and four, play action again. Bryce looking to his right, has a man, and that is caught at the back of the end zone, but was he in bounds? Yes, touchdown Alabama. Ja'Cory Brooks making the grab. Fourth straight play, was it not, in which he was the target? Four plays for Alabama offense. Four catches for Ja'Cory Brooks right there. Bryce starts looking to the left, and Vanderbilt's got it covered, and Brooks just finds a way to slip to the very back of the end zone, and Bryce throws a laser to get it right before Brooks can get one foot down for the touchdown. Kendall Randolph, a tight end to the right side. Latu will join him on that side. Jameer Gibbs, the single setback alongside Bryce Young gets the snap, looking left, throwing left, has a man, catch made, touchdown Alabama, Treshawn holding on the grab, eight yards, Alabama extending its lead now to 13-3. to three. Kendrick Law into the game, split wide right for Alabama, Jameer Gibbs the single setback with three men wide left, changing that now as Latu as he goes in motion to the right. Bryce Young looking deep, has a man, Brooks is there, catch is made, touchdown Alabama. 34 yards, a perfect strike. Bryce to Jacory, and the tide rolls now to a 20 to 3 advantage. Turnover right there from Vanderbilt, Alabama. Hey, let's take a shot. Let's put even more pressure on them. And why not throw to Brooks? Six catches on the day, two touchdowns for Brooks, and he hotter than a pistol right now. And, and Bryce finding him on the field, keep going to him, make it a play, jump ball, go catch it. Two dollar pistol. That's right. a hot one. Okay, let's keep it going to him. Why not? Hotter to firecracker. <laughs> Here's Will Reichard. Ought to try the extra point. Snap, spot, kick are all good. We'll throw one more. Hotter to Cody with a firecracker here right here go. as Bama here leads go. it 21 to 3. Snap to Young. Sitting up in the pocket. Tough get off across the middle. Gibbs. 25. Gibbs. 20. Gibbs. Zigging. Zagging. 15. Still on his feet. Down to the 10. Down to the 7 yard line. Jameer Gibbs fighting for extra yardage. Setting up first and goal, Alabama. A gain of 26. And this kid's good when he's got the ball in his hands. Bryce Young looking left to Kendrick Law. Checks it down again to Gibbs. So many times he's done this season but breaks three tackles on juke moves breaking tackle running through an arm tackle picking us up inside the 10 yard line lots of shifting to the right side here comes the snap young swings it out gibbs zigging to his left cutting inside the five into the end zone touchdown alabama jameer gibbs he earned that one after getting a great block from cameron latu along the way Got to be the best move of the game right there from Gibbs. Catches it out of the backfield. Spin move. This guy is breaking more tackles on this drive. I think it's four in these last two plays. But just smelling the end zone. Finding a way. Breaking tackle. Breaking another one at the two-yard line for the touchdown. And so it's going to be a 30-second timeout. Please reset the game clock to 42 seconds. 4-2. If the referee will hush and we can get the ID out of the way, I promise we'll, yeah, thank you. We'll promise we'll let you get your thought in, JP. Just say it, JP. Saban took a timeout. I mean, <laughs> Vandy, Vandy trying, trying to run the ball, trying to blitz the clock, but now Bryce with 42 seconds left on the clock. Bama snaps it now. Bryce looking, throwing it downfield. He's got a man. Burton, 40. Burton, 30. Trying to spin away. Gets down to the 23-yard line. First and 10, Alabama from there. 10 seconds remaining. 40 yards from the right hash. The hold from Berta. Snap, spot, kick. All perfect. The half was close for Alabama as well. 31-3. to The Tide rolling to the locker room with a big advantage. 
over Vanderbilt. Bryce, plenty of time. All day long. Could read a book. Still looking. Throws. Man is there. Catch is made. Knocked out of bounds. That'll be a first down. Kobe Prentice, the freshman from Calera, making the grab and another bank first. First down for the tie. So the pressure, pressure from uh, Vandy early on this down, but right there. Plenty of time for Bryce to diagnose what's going on. It's Prince coming from the left side all the way across the field, catch the ball at the right sideline. Plenty of time from a magazine to a book to war and peace. By the time it was said and done, Latu comes in tight to the right side. Two wide outs are to the left. Williams the running back. He'll get the handoff. 15, 10, keeps his feet. Five and down to the four-yard line. Roy L. Williams. And, oh, they just threw another flag. And not only did the official throw it late, but he hit Eli Ricks with it. And that's a weighted flag, by the way. And Eli was grabbing his arm like it hurt. Gunner Hansen, the left tackle, will get called for one penalty. But I think they'll get Ricks for pass interference. And he got tagged by the flag as well. Somebody snatch that flag away from the official and fling it back at him and see how that feels. The hold was on number two of the defense. Eli Ricks got hit. He didn't even he didn't the penalty. He did. <laughs> Talk about taking one for the team right there. Young on the handoff. McClellan hesitates. Gets inside the five. Runs over people. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Chase McClellan, 12 yards, leaving bodies in his wake. And the tide leads it now 40-3. to Love this drive from Alabama right here. Doing it both ways through the air and on the ground. But when we got stopped short inside of our own five-yard line on the last drive, it's running game for this time around. Roy Dell, Jace McClellan, Gibbs all getting it done, but it's the guys up front right now just pushing the pile. There's so much moving up front. Tom Sight just yelled donuts in my ears. I thought it was Bill Raftery's version of onions, but instead it's a giveaway, and we'll explain what that is in a moment. But first, Reichard to boot the extra point. That one's up and good, and it's a 41-3 Bama lead. And Bama fans, the Crimson Tide scored a rushing touchdown today. So you score a free donut for the purchase of a beverage from Dunn. Duncan, run by your local Alabama Duncan tomorrow and redeem this offer using your Alabama Crimson Tide app or visit RollTide.com slash Duncan. Score more with Duncan and Bama touchdowns all season long. Donuts just doesn't have the same ring to it, but 41-3 to sounds awfully good with 256 remaining in the third. Hey, I'd much rather be picking up donuts in the morning than, uh, than onions. True. True. And who doesn't love a good donut right now? I wish we had a donut on the board for Alabama. Gave up that one field goal, up 41-3, to three, but we're playing all three phases tonight. Bill Rowe from the pistol with Miller to his right. He'll hand it off. Miller at the middle. Touchdown, Alabama. Hand off goes to Miller. Pushes forward. 30. Still on his feet. 20. 15. 10. 5. Why not? Jamaria Miller. Touchdown, Alabama. 40 yards, and the Crimson Tide gets over the 50-point mark once again. Alabama is going to go to 4-0 on the season. Utah State, Texas, Louisiana Monroe, and now Vanderbilt falling victim to a tied team that came into this one ranked second in the country. Clark Lee and Nick Saban shaking hands near midfield, and the tide improves to 4-0. That's just part of the fun we have inside the broadcast booth for Alabama football. Uh, of course, we have the booth cam presented by Royal Furniture running for each and every Alabama football game this season. We certainly hope you can join us. It's streaming live just like the show on all of our social media outlets. So that was really fun against Vanderbilt on Saturday. But now time to take a look forward to what's coming up this week, the Arkansas Razorbacks. And yesterday it was head coach Nick Saban meeting with the media to begin Arkansas week as he takes a little bit of a look back to the Vanderbilt win, but also looks forward to this very good Arkansas team that will be Saturday's opponent for the Crimson Tide. You know, we had a good start in the SEC. I think we played, you know, a little better in the last game, uh, paid better attention to detail, had more success when we did. Um, and when we didn't, we probably didn't have as much success, but we were very consistent uh, for the most part in how we executed offensively, defensively, and on special teams. Still things that we need to improve on. You know, we need to show that we can sort of build uh, on this and show progress as a team, individually and collectively. Uh, this is a very dangerous team we're playing in Arkansas. They have a very, very good team coming off a tough loss. Um, 
so they make a lot of explosive plays. You know, A.J. Jefferson is dual threat wise, big, strong, really good passer. Uh, they got a lot of quarterback runs, uh, which create another gap on defense. And to go with that, they have great play action passes. They make a lot of explosive plays. You know, Sam's done a great job there to me, and they got a, they play with toughness. You know, they run the ball effectively, they stop the run on defense. I mean, their guys play hard. Um, we got a real culture there um, that shows great intangibles. Um, their defense is good. Uh, so this is a really, really good all-around team, and it's going to take great preparation on our part to go on the road and be able to play the way we need to play against a very good SEC team. Well, I think the big thing is he's got a lot of new people around him, uh, and I think that it creates tremendous value for him, as he did in the last game, when he makes it work with the players that we have now. And I think each week we've done a little bit better job of that. And uh, I think to have continued growth in that area is important for him and for us. Coach's checklist with the head coach of the Crimson Tide, Nick Saban. And I want to remind you as well, don't be the only one to miss out on the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs as they make their return to the great state of Alabama this weekend. Witness the return of racing to Talladega this Sunday and be a part of the electric playoff atmosphere. Tickets are on sale now at talladegasuperspeedway.com. Secure your tickets today. If you can't make it to the race, you can tune in on NBC at 1 p.m. Central coming up this Sunday, October 2nd. We'll be talking more about the race coming up at Talladega on our Thursday edition of Crimson Drive, driven by NASCAR, as we will also have a conversation on Thursday with linebacker Henry To'o To'o. We always have one-on-one -on -one conversations with Tide football players. Henry will be coming up on Thursday, but today we had a really great chance to catch up with J.C. Latham, who's an offensive lineman for the Crimson Tide, has been earning a lot of playing time and been playing really well on the offensive line for Alabama this season. Here's our one-on-one -on -one conversation with Alabama's J.C. Latham. Them. JC, it's been four games so far. How do you feel like the offensive line has performed for Alabama? Uh, I feel like we're doing great. Um, I feel like every week we're performing better and getting better every week at what we got to get better at. Um, I feel like we're playing a lot more consistent, um, picking up on what we got to pick up on, um, reading defensive games, and ultimately, like I said, we're just getting better each week and being more consistent. I feel like we're doing a really good job at that. What was your focus in the summer getting ready for preseason camp and then what you do to earn some playing time in camp? Um, ultimately, my focus and really everybody's focus um, was pass protection. Um, I know we uh, gave up a lot of sacks last year. So in the summer, really, a lot of guys stayed here and we just decided to bang out a lot of fundamentals and um, work really hard at that, making sure that feel me, we're on our P's and Q's going into this um, fall. And me personally, that's really what was one of my goals too because, you know, we got Bryce. Bryce Young back there, um, the Heisman winner. So, you know, we want to keep him healthy and keep him protected. So, um, yeah, we just did a really good job at making sure every day we came came here, just worked hard and got something in that we can benefit us. Is it fun to block for Bryce? I'm sure there are times you don't even know where he is. He's yeah. dancing around so much back there. Yeah, uh, it's definitely fun. It gets a little hectic sometimes uh, just because, you feel me, he likes to scramble and stuff. But ultimately, like, it's really fun uh, blocking for him. And I just love seeing the plays that he makes sometimes. You feel me, he'll scramble out of the pocket, and you'll see a couple guys gaining closer on him. You'll think he'll get a sack, and then next thing you know, he'll just shift his way out of it and then make a big play. So it's definitely exciting to see him. Pass protection has been good for the Crimson Tide. How do you feel like the run blocking has been so far? Um, ultimately, I feel like the run blocking is also really good. I feel like we need to uh, be more consistent. Like I said, you feel me? That's always areas for improvement. Um, but really, as it goes down to it, I mean, um, we're doing a pretty good job. Personally, how I feel um, as far as the run game goes. But, yeah, um, just needs to be more physical and just more consistent day in and day out. This is the first year at Alabama for Eric Wolford, your offensive line coach. Have you enjoyed getting to know him? Anything different that he's helped you with in your game? Um, he's a great coach, and um, he's definitely really focusing on the little things, the little details, you feel me? So everything, hand placement, footwork, um, knee bend, um, eye discipline, all those things. And each day we just focus on getting better at one of those areas. And, uh, yeah, we just make sure that every single day we show up, we show up to work and get ready to work. So yeah, he's a great coach. Crimson Tide going on the road this week to Arkansas. We always hear about for the quarterback, it's tough when it's in a loud environment, but how about on the offensive line? How can crowd noise affect you guys? 
Um, yeah, I mean, it's hard to hear a snap count, especially at tackle. But um, as long as we just lock in and stay focused, um, I think we'll be pretty. I think we'll do a pretty good job. Um, just making sure we know exactly what's going on, the cadence, understanding that there's going to probably be defensive things that they're going to try to do to get us to jump a little bit. So um, just staying disciplined and um, you feel playing with some poise and just you know, being ready for anything that comes our way. JC Lane, thank you for joining us. Roll Tide. No problem. Roll Tide. With the Talladega Garage experience, you can get up close and personal to just about everything Talladega has to offer. Heck, any more access and you'd be a driver. Book your Talladega Garage experience at talladegasuperspeedway.com. Well, it is Arkansas week as the Alabama Crimson Tide look to continue their winning ways against the Razorbacks, and we're going to be in Fayetteville coming up this Saturday for the Tide and the Hogs. Joining us for the other booth this week is Chuck Barrett. He is the longtime radio broadcaster for Arkansas football, and he gives us a detailed scouting report on Arkansas, a team that's 3-1, and one, but also coming off a very tough loss last time out against Texas A&M. You'll hear all about that and more as we have the other booth with the voice of the Razorbacks, Chuck Barrett. And Chuck, it's great to see you. How have things been going for the Razorbacks this season? Well, we had a heartbreaker Saturday night, Roger. Good to see you as well. Um, that one's a little bit hard to get over, but I think it's been a motivating factor. I mean, I think for people who've been around football, they know that sometimes games like that stick in your craw in a good way. Um, and I think that it's been a motivating factor this week for them. And, you know, obviously we'll see what happens Saturday afternoon, but I think they've been able to put that in the rearview mirror and look ahead. Um, you can't get ready for this week. It's probably not going to happen. Yeah, you mentioned a heartbreaker against Texas A&M. Uh, the missed field goal at the end, a lot of people point to that. But there were so many other kind of close calls, the fumble near the goal line that ends up being returned by A&M for a touchdown. Just there were a lot of moments it seemed like Arkansas had a chance to put that game away. Yeah, and I think the feeling was when they were up 14 to nothing that, you know, this was going to be our night. And even after they, you know, they busted a big run and kind of flipped the field and scored a touchdown on, you know, sort of a wounded duck pass. But Razorbacks came right back down the field and they were in a position to go up 21-7. And, you know, they really hadn't been stopped. And the fumble changed everything. I mean, the fumble changed everything. And, um, you know, it was a strange play and that one guy took it back about 40 yards and then another guy took it from him and you know went the you know went the rest of the way so it was a it was a crazy play but I thought it was really until the fourth quarter that Arkansas got their feet back underneath them um A&M kept the ball the whole third quarter and by the time Arkansas got the ball back in a position to really do something they were you know they were down nine so um it was a frustrating night because sometimes you leave the stadium and you feel like we should have won we were better than those guys and I think that was the feeling coming out of Arlington Saturday night. Well, a lot of people around the SEC feel like that K.J. Jefferson is one of the best quarterbacks in this league. Certainly had a great game in Tuscaloosa against Alabama a year ago, but how has he progressed uh, from the last time we saw him against Alabama? You know, I think it's going to be interesting to watch how they utilize him in the ball game because, you know, K.J., when he's at his best, he's sometimes winning the game with his feet. And, you know, I think about what happened in Tuscaloosa last year and in a lot of other ball games. Um, I think as the games get more difficult, I think you're going to see him run more. I think you'll see him run more in this ball game. We saw him run more in the A&M game. Uh, Sam Pittman's been pretty frank about it. He said, we go into every ball game asking ourselves, how much do we have to run KJ to win this game? And I think as the games get more difficult, um, you have to run KJ more if you're going to have a chance to win the game. You know, he's still, uh, um, you know, he's still a work in progress on the intermediate passing game. He throws a beautiful deep ball. I mean, just a great deep ball. And if you look at the percentages, um, he, his, his, his short throws, you know, within five, eight yards of the line of scrimmage, um, you know, he's 75, 80% on those. Uh, deep balls, you know, those over 30, those over, uh, uh, you know, 40 sometimes. I mean, right now, I think he's 7 of 12 on what's classified as a deep ball. But then you get into the intermediate game, and it's just kind of so-so. So I think that's where he's still a work in progress. But, you know, he's a competitor, and he's a gamer. And he's one of those guys that when the game's on the line or when you're in a critical spot, you just as soon he not throw it. I mean, you want to keep the ball in his hands because – he can make plays with his feet, and he's 6'3 and 240. He can make you miss or he can bowl you over, and, and you don't see that combination with quarterbacks very often. 
Who are some of his favorite targets when he does distribute the football? Uh, who star fans have in mind coming up on Saturday on the offense? You know, side? it's interesting. I, I mean, Traylon Burks is gone, and I, I, you know, I know he's the one everybody remembers from a year ago. And um, but you know, deep in, in, in terms of the receiving core, um, you know, they've got more guys that they throw the ball to. It was pretty much Burks or Bus last year, but um, he's got a really good target in his tight end, Trey Knox, number seven. Um, you know, I think you'll see him go to him a lot. Trey's got the body now of a tight end, but he's still got the speed and agility of of, of a wide out. So he's been a real target. Um, Jaden Hazelwood's a transfer from Oklahoma, and he's really beginning to come into his own. Um, and I think you'll see him utilized a lot uh, in the passing game when they throw the ball. Uh, Matt Landers transferred in from Toledo, started at Georgia. A&M kind of shut him down. He had a big catch late in the game, but he, you know, he wasn't that big a factor uh, like he'd been in some of the other ball games. But he's a good player. Um, Keytron Jackson's a guy that's come on. So uh, they've got some targets there. You know, Warren Thompson's the one that caught that deep ball against A&M. He's a transfer from Florida State. So, you know, they've got some good players there. But, you know, this team's, you know, it's bread and butter's running the football. I mean, uh, and, and when you look at what they've done so far, they've been good on third down, and that's because they've been good on first and second down. They, the strength of this team's the offensive line. And, you know, if, if the defense can get off the field and the offense doesn't give the ball away, um, this team's pretty good. Then going to the defensive side of the ball, it seems like Drew Sanders, your outstanding linebacker, has had a pretty good transition going from Alabama to Arkansas. He's playing at a high level. He really is. I mean, he's been, um, you know, I know the first time I saw him early in uh, preseason camp, um, you know, you knew he was special the way he can run. He's playing more inside the box now than he did at Alabama. That's that's one of the differences in uh, what he's doing now. And, um, you know, he's a great player. I mean, he's still got a lot of things to learn playing inside the box. It's not perfect. But, I mean, this guy's got a flair for making big plays, and he can run, and he goes – you know, he, he can go get the quarterback. He's got great football instincts, and, you know, we're glad to have him. And uh, <laughs> we're glad he's on our side now, just 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 to be honest with you. Um, you know, this is not a shutdown defense, and I won't pretend that it is. It's It gets after the quarterback. I mean, they, they, they will go after the quarterback. They've had some trouble on the back end. They've had injuries there that have really hurt them in terms of their secondary. And um, so a lot of times if, if, you know, you know that you're not as perhaps where you want to be in the secondary, you better get after that quarterback if you're going to cover up for it. So that's kind of what they've done. Now, the thing that they, they've not done the last couple of weeks is forced turnovers. That's what they did in the first two ball games. Um, they were plus four in the first two ball games and minus four in the last two ball games with a zero in the turnovers forced column. So, um, that's, that's something that early in the season, I mean, I think about the South Carolina ball game, Cincinnati ball game, picked off passes, opportunistic. This is not going to be the type of defense that, you know, holds you to, you know, 280 yards of total offense, but they can be opportunistic. They do have some playmakers back there. And, um, it starts for this defense anyway, with rushing the quarterback. Last time the Crimson Tide played in Fayetteville was 2020 with reduced capacity uh, as we are still dealing with the early days of the pandemic. So it's been quite a while for Alabama to go to Reynolds uh, Razorback Stadium full capacity. For our fans that are making the trip for the first time to Fayetteville in quite a while, what should they check out on campus around the ballgame? Well, you know, Old Main is, I guess, what you could say is our Denny Chimes. Um, and uh, they've, they've, they've got a beautiful lawn. It's, it's, it's a little bit removed from the stadium. But, um, you know, it connects the campus with Dixon Street, which is our entertainment district. And I think if people are here Friday night, they, they'd probably enjoy making that walk. Game day, there's a lot to do both north and south of the stadium. Um, it's, uh, it's a lot better, frankly, than it used to be from a, uh, you know, from a tailgating perspective. Um, you know, all these campuses now, if there's a spot on the lawn, they put a building up. So, it's not always easy to find a good spot to tailgate, but um, I think you'll enjoy the atmosphere. We've got a beautiful stadium. It's going to be full. Um, you know, I know whenever Alabama comes, they, they take their full allotment. We don't have to worry about reselling those. And so that'll be fun. 
Um, you know, it's, it's, it's been a long time since Arkansas has beaten Alabama. I, I mean, much less a long time since you guys have been here. It's been a long time since the Razorbacks have won. And so, you know, every year, just like everybody Alabama plays, you know, you wonder if this is going to be the year. But you guys got a way of ruining everybody's plans. So, uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe it'll work out this time. I don't know. Hey, at least we'll wear our crimson red coming up. We got those instructions. <laughs> I know you will. It is a red out Saturday. Yeah. So you guys will blend right in. <laughs> we are certainly ready to go. Well, uh, Chuck Barrett, thank you so much for joining us. A uh, fun conversation, getting to learn more about the Razorbacks. Uh, all the best coming up this Saturday. Thank you. Roger. Thank you. I enjoyed being with you. Fun conversation with Chuck Barrett, the voice of the Arkansas Razorbacks, as that's what Alabama has coming up this week. Alabama against Arkansas on Saturday in Fayetteville. Uh, so we look forward to seeing Chuck and all our Razorback friends coming up this weekend. It was, of course, a great win for the Crimson Tide this past weekend against the Vanderbilt Commodores. And each Monday night on the Crimson Tide Sports Network, not only on radio and on the Varsity Network app, but also streaming live just like the show on all of our different social media outlets with the Crimson Tide Sports Network. We have Crimson Tide Rewind. And we host it from the Birmingham area in Vestavia Hills at Baumhauer's Victory Grill. Corey Reamer was able to join me at the restaurant last night. We had a fun conversation, mostly looking back at the Vanderbilt win. A little bit of thoughts as well coming up on Arkansas. But again, mostly looking back at what turned out to be a great SEC opener for the Crimson Tide. So here is the best of Crimson Tide Rewind from last night in a segment we like to call Be Kind, Crimson Tide Rewind. Corey, Roll Tide, the Crimson Tide, 4-0. Yeah, it's a great start to the season, and uh, now I think the meat of the schedule really starts to ramp up, uh, starting with this weekend against uh, Arkansas on the road. So uh, October's going to be a very telling month of what this team's really going to be made of. You know, I had some tough game against Texas early, had a couple games in between uh, on the, both sides of that game that were easy wins, and then you start SEC play with Vanderbilt, and uh, they did what they were supposed to do against a Vandy team that is, is still outmatched uh, in a lot of ways against this Alabama uh, Alabama team. The defense stepped up more than anything it felt like. Yeah, you can't undercut what this defense has done this year. I mean, even though it's been some, you know, some moments here where you had some disappointments on what we had going on, but in terms of what they've allowed, I think, what, two touchdowns so far this season through four games, and like we just said, they're doing what they're supposed to do against lesser opponents. Uh, but they're showing up. That's the main thing is that's a good sign for this team, this Alabama team in general is – no matter who the opponent is, they are showing up and playing well, and it starts with this defense. They are definitely the backbone of this team so far this season, uh, led by Will Anderson. And uh, uh, all, a lot of guys on this front have really gotten involved, uh, this front seven, with a, a lot of seniority. Henry Toto had a great game. We saw Jalen Moody had a couple good games. So it's not just one guy. It's, it's a lot of them. And they're finding – Pete Golding is doing a great job of finding creative ways – to, uh, to, to showcase his playmakers. And we're, we've got three great pass rushers with Dallas Turner, Will Anderson, and Chris Braswell. We're finding ways to get all three of those guys on the field. Uh, there's, a, there's just a lot of really good players on the defensive side of the ball. Offense as well, but defense is definitely, uh, you know, st one of the things, the strengths that's probably going to carry us into this stretch that we've got going uh, for the rest of this season. Uh, we're really going to be leaning on them to shut down some pretty effective offenses. Chris Stewart on the call filling in for Eli Gold as Alabama picks up a 55-3 win over Vanderbilt. And, Corey, we've talked a lot about this on Crimson Tide Rewind and pre and post. Alabama's wide receiving course so far in the first three games of the year, the leading receiver, Jameer Gibbs. Who would emerge from the wide receiver room? Turned out to be Ja'Cory Brooks. Yeah, Ja'Cory Brooks had a day. It's, uh, and you heard Coach Saban talking about in the, in the post-game press conference. It's like it, it's not predetermined who's going to go out there and, and get all the catches. Uh, it just taking what the defense can, gives you, and Ja'Cory Brooks was the beneficiary of uh, Bryce finding him open, and he made some great plays. The good thing that we saw from this wide receiver core was they didn't drop any balls. There weren't as many drop balls as we saw through the first three games. So we've got talent out there. You know, it's just a lot of new faces. It's not the same names that we're, we've, we grew accustomed to seeing for the last few years. We've got a long line of really successful wide receivers that you could always rely on. They could go out there and make plays, and we're still trying to find that guy. And it, it's probably going to be a wide receiver by committee, and I think this week we might be seeing some of these guys that were hurt uh, coming back which is going to be exciting uh, to add to that wide receiver room, uh, get some other guys out there. But Corey Brooks uh, and, and Burton also had a great game this weekend as well. And, you know, you look at the stats, you see Bryce Young throwing for, what was it, 306, uh, 300, 385, uh, and he didn't even play in the fourth quarter. So he was spreading the ball around to every, uh, everybody. And Coach Saban talked about, you know, we talked about last week or pregame that 
I thought the game plan was going to be we really are still looking to establish the run between the tackles as an offense. We're still trying to find that identity. And he comes out and he starts going 4-5 wide. And not something that I expected at all against Vanderbilt, but he said that we saw what the matchups were going to be against this Vanderbilt team. We felt like our best uh, opportunity to take advantage of some uh, weaknesses on that Vanderbilt defense was spread them out, and the secondary was the weak spot for them. And so it's a, it's a great day for the, those receivers. Build some confidence. You know, those, that's a good thing about this receiving group. They got a lot of reps, a lot of reps this past weekend, and that can only help them build more and more confidence going into some of these tougher games where it might not be as easy as it was uh, against Vanderbilt. Twelve different receivers caught a pass, and then even guys like Isaiah Bond and also uh, Kendrick Law were involved earlier in the ballgame than they had been before. Yeah, two phenomenal freshmen that have that have, uh, have earned their, their way onto the field, not just in cleanup duty. They're playing some meaningful snaps that are early in the game as well. Uh, and, and playing well. But I did, uh, I was really impressed by both of those guys uh, getting out there and showing that they, we have some depth, which is the main thing that you're looking for when you start playing these types of games is we're establishing guys that we can lean on when things, you know, we need on a lot of different positions, defensive line, offensive line, wide receivers, as much depth as we can possibly build. Uh, and the games like this where you can get those guys in early when you're playing with the number ones, you're playing with Bryce, you're playing with the guys that are the starters uh, and getting some familiarity with how things are run, the plays that are being called, which might be different when you start getting uh, Jalen Milrow and, and those guys in. These are real, real reps, and it's good for Bryce, but it's also good for these young receivers uh, to really build some rapport with uh, those starting, starting quarterbacks, starting running backs, everybody, and the coaches uh, knowing what plays they can call to, to get these guys uh, the best opportunity to succeed. It's going to be a meaningful win for Tyler Steen, left tackle for the Crimson Tide, who played for Vanderbilt last season, transfers really late in the process over the summer to join the Crimson Tide. He played extremely well. Yeah, he did, and I saw player, one of the players of the game on the offensive side of the ball. Good for him. That's a, it's a I mean, it's, it's tough. You know, it's got to be mentally tough. You know, you, you practice with those guys. You spend a lot of time in the locker room with those guys uh, and to play against your former team. But this is the new age of college football with the transfer portal. And another example of how Alabama just goes out there and f fills the needs that they have. An offensive line was one of them. We go find a guy who's playing in a program like Vanderbilt who uh, hasn't won a ton since he's been there. And so now he's got an opportunity to come start for us. Uh, at left tackle, this is the opportunity that uh, the transfer portal has, has opened up, and he's playing extremely well. He's been one of the, you know, s the consistent players on that offensive line. He's playing extremely well. Well, Anderson Jr. had a lot of big hits for the Crimson Tide on Saturday, and Corey Reamer, earlier today, we learned he's the SEC Defensive Player of the Week. Yeah, great for him. Two and a half sacks, I think, is what it was, but he had a lot of impact on this game. And it was, it was really the first time that he's had an opportunity to go out there and actually get a pass rush going because a lot of the teams that we've played so far, balls come out quick. Uh, they're doing a lot to, to really slow down Will Anderson, even though we've got Dallas Turner and Chris Braswell on the other side. They're still focusing on Will Anderson, and rightfully so. He's one of the best players in the country, doing whatever they can, trying to chip block him, slow him down just a little bit. And uh, uh, Pete Golding and, and Coach Saban doing a great job of trying to get him some internal rush, doing some – uh, doing some running some games inside with the defensive tackles and trying to get him an opportunity to just get some one-on-one -on -one pass rush opportunities and he definitely got home a couple times uh, this week which is good to see because it's been a slow start I won't say it's, it's been a slow start from a stat standpoint he's had a, a great start to the season he's a, a huge leader for this team uh, and I know he was excited to finally get some of those sacks get it rolling hopefully it's a, a good sign of things to come continue building on that number uh, for the rest of the season. Great show last night with Corey Reamer. If you missed it, of course, it's available on demand on all of our social media outlets to watch the live stream that, like you're watching right now on Crimson Drive, driven by NASCAR. Also, if you want an audio version, that's available as well on the Alabama Insider Podcast. We are getting ready for a big week as Alabama takes on Arkansas this Saturday, so it's time for a Wickles Weekend Update brought to you by Wickles Pickles. They are wickedly delicious. Find out more at WicklesPickles.com. Well, coming up around the Crimson Tide Sports Network this week. We're going to be very busy, of course, with our next Crimson Drive driven by NASCAR coming up on Thursday afternoon at 2 o'clock, right back here on the CTSN Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube pages. And then later that night, it will be Hey Coach and the Nick Saban Show from Baumhauer's Victory Grill in Tuscaloosa. We can't wait to hear Chris Stewart host that show along with the head coach of the Crimson Tide, Nick Saban. On Friday, we'll have the This Week on CTSN podcast. It's perfect, especially if you're making the road trip to Fayetteville to 
watch the Crimson Tide and the Razorbacks this week on CTSN. We'll have the best of our content throughout the week. And then it will be October 1st. We'll turn the calendar to a new month and a very important month for Alabama football as the Crimson Tide take on the Arkansas Razorbacks on Saturday. Kickoff is coming up at 2.30 p.m. and we will have our airtime at 11.30 across the network coming up on Saturday. Then on Sunday, it'll be the Nick Saban television show with Chris Stewart. We'll also have Tide TV this week taking a look at all Alabama sports. And then on Monday, we just saw the Be Kind Crimson Tide Rewind highlights. We will have another edition of Crimson Tide Rewind coming up at 6 p.m. from Baumhauer's Victory Grill in Vestavia Hills. Crimson Drive, driven by NASCAR, and I want to remind you the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs are returning to Talladega this weekend. Don't miss your chance to be part of the best atmosphere in sports. Purchase your tickets today for the NASCAR Cup Series playoff race at talladegasuperspeedway.com. We're going to be talking more Talladega and NASCAR coming up on our Thursday edition. There might be a surprise guest in there as well, so you want to make sure you join us coming up on Thursday at 2 p.m. for our next episode of Crimson Drive, driven by NASCAR. Thanks to our producer, Ethan Carabin, for putting this show together. Thanks to the great guests we've had, including Chuck Barrett, the voice of the Arkansas Razorbacks, offensive lineman J.C. Latham from the Crimson Tide football team, as well as Corey Reamer from last night's Crimson Tide Rewind as well. It's exciting as we're getting into Arkansas week and we're getting closer to October. October, and we're glad that you're with us for this journey here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network. Until next time, this has been Roger Hoover saying roll tide, and we'll see you Thursday for another edition of Crimson Drive, driven by NASCAR.